Hello and welcome to a very special art vlog because I just got final client approval on this guy so I thought that today I would talk about all of my final steps in an art commission and the importance of challenging myself as an artist. Because this piece was so large and so complicated, I've done a whole series about it from original sketch to completion. So be sure to check all of those out in the description box down below if you missed any of those. I think of creating a piece like this sort of like writing an essay in school. You start off with the research and the information gathering and then you move on to sort of a rough outline and then you sit down and you write your actual essay from beginning to end and that's sort of your rough draft. To me, when I finally get the entire canvas covered with paint and everything is done, that's sort of my rough draft. At that point, I go back in and make sure that I'm happy with everything individually and as a whole now that it is all actually there. So I can look back at something that I painted days or weeks ago, like the mountain in the background, and I can determine if I'm happy with the contrast level there, if there's an area that is blending too much into something in the foreground. I can really nitpick and fine tune at that point. Just like an essay, once you've finished writing the actual paper, that's really just your rough draft and you have to enter into the editing phase. My first set of edits are usually my own as the artist. I take a step back and look at the canvas as a whole, make sure that nothing is bothering me, there's nothing that's weird with some contrast or a color that's not quite working for me anymore or something, and I then go back in and edit any of those. For instance, sometimes like say I had painted this mountain way, way before I painted the dog in front of it. So where I thought I might have wanted a shadow on the mountain, maybe now I don't want that there and it looks a little weird, it's blending in too much with something, whatever. I can go ahead now and make that change. Obviously the front here is the part that's mostly going to be seen, so I focus on that. But once I'm pretty happy artistically with this, I go ahead and since this is a wrapped canvas, I'm going to have to go all the way around and look at all four edges and make sure that I'm happy with how well those are covered. I don't worry about getting the same amount of detail on the side as I do on the front, but I want to make sure that similar colors and textures are wrapping around so it's not a really glaring difference if somebody is viewing the canvas hanging on a wall without a frame. I personally prefer to work on wrapped canvases for that purpose because you don't technically need a frame. You can just hang up the painting as is. If the client chooses to put it into a frame, of course it's their painting, that's their decision, that's totally on them, but I feel like I as an artist am giving them options if they decide maybe they just don't know what kind of frame they want to put it in yet, and they want to go ahead and just hang it up for now, and then add a frame later, or whatever, it's perfectly presentable as is. Once I'm happy artistically with the front of the painting and I've checked around all four edges, I consider that sort of the first round of edits and I can now send off images to the clients. In the case of a commission that is a single small piece of paper, just one little image, I usually just send one picture. But in this case, I needed a little more. For my first and probably most important image, I took a few steps back so that I could get the entire canvas into frame and I made sure to hold my camera so that I would have the camera and the painting parallel to each other. If you tilt one or the other at a weird angle and they're not running parallel, it will distort the image, especially for one this big. If the top of the painting is leaning away, it's actually going to look a lot smaller than the bottom of the painting and that's going to throw all the perspective off and it's going to look really weird and very distorted. If you're seeing the painting like that in person, it's not so obvious. Your eye can sort of automatically translate all that information. But if you're sending just an image of it, it gets a little distorted even more, I feel. So that first image is very important to me to get it as square to the camera as possible. Once I have one picture of the entire composition, I go ahead and take a series of detail shots. For those, I'm not focusing on, you know, the trees here in the background and the grassy hill. Those are very minor parts of the composition and nobody really cares about those. But I did make sure to get detail shots of each of the two dogs that were zoomed in and cropped in to really focus on those animals because they are the main important aspects of the composition. 
and then just based off of conversations that I've had with the clients that determines what and how many pictures I take to send to them for approvals and I always make sure to tell them that if there's anything else that they want a shot of just to let me know and I can just snap a quick picture and send it off to them. So the first round of edits are mine as an artist, but the second and actually usually multiple rounds of editing are the clients. This piece in particular has some very personal details to it that are very meaningful to the clients. So I want to make sure that I portray them all correctly and that they're happy with all of the details. For instance, I don't know these two dogs, they're literally across the country from me. But the client obviously does, so I want them to be very happy with the end product. So something that doesn't register to me as wrong, they will instantly be like, oh wait, there's this. For instance, this is little Charlie, and on his nose is a little freckle that in the reference photos that I had, it just sort of blended into like his nostril and the shading there, so I didn't notice it in the pictures. But then they of course did, and they sent me back a different picture where I could see the little freckle, and I could go in and I could add that detail. That's the kind of thing that is really going to make it look like Charlie to them, not just a random cat. So after a little bit of back and forth with the pictures and some fine tuning of the painting, I got final approval and now we're ready to finish off the painting. But before that I thought I would go ahead and point out a few of the major challenges I had with this painting because those are the things that I love about it the most. One of the great things about being a freelance artist is that I don't have a lot of control over what I paint. I'm approached by a client who asks for certain specific things and often, like in this case, it's not something that I would have thought to have painted myself. I never would have thought, hey, I should paint two dogs sitting in the Basque countryside and sipping wine amidst a field of cats and sheep. Never would have entered my mind, but it makes so much sense to this client. So automatically, that will often send me out of my comfort zone and my wheelhouse, but there are also some things about this painting that were specifically difficult items. Every artist has their strong suits, but there are certain things that most artists will agree are a little more challenging than others. For instance, as I've talked about in previous videos in this series, white dog, black cat, painting white and black items is never really easy. You have to work in color and shading and make it look like it has form and depth, but make it still read as a white or black animal or object. So that was a challenge placed on me as an artist to have two white dogs but make them look like they are the same breed and they belong together in the same you know, space and world, but that they look like two distinctly different personalities. So I gave them slightly different color palettes and painted them slightly differently, but also had things that carried over from one to the other so they were tied together nicely. Then as an added challenge, they're sitting at a table with a table cloth and I, as an artist, was left with a decision to make there. I decided to go with a cream tablecloth for a couple different reasons. First of all, by having the table be cream, but the dogs be white, this brighter white with more contrast that's happening in the dog will draw more focus and attention to the dog and let the slightly darker, not so chromatic, not so saturated and contrasted tablecloth be a little bit less important to the viewer's eye. Another thing that I don't know that a lot of non-artists will pick up on as a challenge are the clear wine glasses. It's clear. No biggie, right? Well, kind of like how white is hard to render because it's nothing. Same thing with glass. How do you draw clear? I covered that a little bit more in depth in one of the previous videos when I talked about reference photos, but definitely that was one of the bigger challenges for this painting. I spent at least as long on each of these glasses as I did on each of the dogs. And it's funny because they're so small comparatively over the space and area of the picture. Very interesting challenge.
I hope you found this and all of the previous art vlogs about this painting inspiring and helpful. If you did, please like down below and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications because there will definitely be more art vlogs in the future. I hope you have a beautiful day and all that's left for me to do is sign this painting and ship it off. <laughs>